All right, so I finished a lot of general announcements just to get the class organized, mostly with the white packets that students should use to keep their notes organized in this class. Again, students have the option to take that binder with them or leave them in the class. Students receive their Unit 1 Topic 1 Note Packet and their Unit 1 Topic 1 Homework Packet, both of which we'll be using for pretty much most of September. The test on this unit is projected to be around September 18, 19, something like that. Uh, students were already given a couple minutes to complete the multiplication, and I'm ready to get started on page two of the note packet. Okay, our goal for today, you'll see in the objectives, is to graph parent functions. So before I actually do this problem, I want to talk about what we mean when we say parent functions. Okay, so let me pull up my graphing calculator. Like I said, you may want a graphing calculator today to follow along as well, but for this, you can just watch. If I go to y equals and I type x squared, that is an example of a parent function. That's the blue curve. Now, if I do something to it, if I stretch it out to make it wider or press it in to make it skinnier, or if I move it up, down, left, or right, that's a transformation. So that's altering the parent function. So the blue is the parent function. Now, if I move it down, let's say I do x squared minus 5, so I take it and I move it down 5, the red is not a parent function. The blue is, but the red is a transformed function. And that's not the only way I could transform it. I could have also done something like, let me make it a lot skinnier. Maybe I do 3x squared, okay? The blue is the parent function. The red has been pressed in. That's not a parent function. It's a transformation, okay? Another way I could do this is I could make it wider. I could do something like 1 third x squared. Okay, so you have the parent function, and then you have the transform function. It's made wider. So when we say parent function, what we're talking about is something as simple as x squared. No numbers, no multiplication, no addition, no division, no subtraction, just the function, x squared. Okay, that's what we're talking about when we say a parent function. Now, the first example we're going to look at today, you'll notice it says the function f of x equals x squared minus 1 is shown below. So we're not looking at a parent function. We're looking at a transformed function. They took the parent function, which is this, but then they moved it down one by subtracting one, minus one. And it's the same curve, except it's bumped down one. That's the graph that's being shown to you in your packet. And that's what we're going to focus on first, okay? So one of the main tasks that we're going to be looking for on the quiz this week on Friday is, can we give you a function that you can then fill in a table and create a sketch. That's the goal. Okay, so I'm gonna model that for you now. So the function f of x equals x squared minus one is shown below. Complete the table. So we wanna complete this table. And then we're gonna plot all seven points on this curve. Okay, that's our goal. Now, the first point is actually given to us. I don't know if people remember this from algebra one or geometry, but when you look at an x value, that is telling you how much to move left and right. When you look at a y value or an f of x value, that's telling you how to move up and down. So if I wanted to plot this very first point, negative 3 tells you move to the left 3. Positive 8 tells you move up 8. So I'd like everyone right now to plot one point for me. Start at the middle, start at 0, and go left 3, and then go up eight and plot a point right there. So everyone do that now, please. Please record that point at negative three comma eight. That's the first point, negative three, eight, okay? Now what I modeled for you, by the way, is a pattern that I'm gonna follow all year. If I write in green, you don't have to copy it. You don't have to write it down. You should understand it, but you don't have to write it down. If I write in blue, you need to copy it. You need to write that down, okay? now. I stress that because I'm about to write a lot of stuff in green. And I want to warn you, you don't have to write it down. I want to show you two different ways that you could fill in this table. One is a much longer way where you have to do the math in your head. That's what I'm going to write in green. But then I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to show you how you could get it done very quickly in a graphing calculator. It'll basically do the table for you. Okay? So let me start with this. Writing in green so you don't have to copy. This formula says... Take the x value, square it, then subtract 1. And that's what was done for you. They took the negative 3, they squared it. Negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, which is 9. And then subtract 1, you get 8. 
I'm going to do that same thing for all the other x values. I'm going to take negative 2, and I'm going to square it and subtract 1. You don't have to write that down. Okay, I'm showing you the long way first. I'm going to take negative 1, square it and subtract 1. I'm going to take 0, square it and subtract 1. And I'm going to do this for every single one of these x values. 1, 2, and 3. This is what the formula tells you to do. Take the x value, square it, and subtract 1. Now, if you want to do it this way and you want to do the math in your head, no problem. Okay, I'm going to now switch to blue because I definitely want you all to write this down. Negative 2 squared is 4 minus 1 is 3. A lot of people think it's negative 4, but it's not. Negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, and negative times negative is positive. So it's 4 minus 1 is 3. Negative 1 squared is 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 squared is 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Notice I'm writing in blue. The numbers in blue you should be writing down. Make sure you copy the blue. 1 squared minus 1 is 0. 2 squared minus 1 is 3. And 3 squared minus 1 is 8. So at this point, if you followed along and you've been taking the, the blue notes, you have completed the table. So let me show you a much faster way that we could have done this with the graphing calculator. Okay? What I could have done is if I go to my graphing calculator, and let me start over. I'm gonna I'm gonna clear the screen and everything. Okay, just to make sure I'm starting from scratch. I want to type this equation x squared minus one into y equals. So, and for those of you picking up a calculator, that's a good idea. You're following along with me. I appreciate that. You hit y equals and you type x squared minus one. Now if you graph it, if you hit graph, it's this button in the top right corner, that's just going to show you the picture, which is good. I mean, it matches the picture in our note packet. But I'm pretending like I want to com complete this table. Well, check this out. On the calculator, right behind the graph button is the word table, and it's blue. So if I hit the blue button and then hit graph, it'll jump me to a table. And now I can copy the values. Notice it says when the x value is 0, 1, 2, 3, which we have, 0, 1, 2, 3. When the x value is 0, 1, 2, 3, the calculator is saying the values are negative 1, 0, 3, and 8. Well, if you look at our screen, negative 1, 0, 3, and 8. So I could have just copied these right out of the calculator. Now, to get the other ones, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, I have to go up. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And what this says is for the x values, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, the values are 8, 3, 0. 8 was given, 3, 0. So two different ways to get those points. Do it by hand, which is the green, or get it out of the calculator. So that's completing the table. Now we need to plot all seven points. Now remember what I said before, when you're plotting the points, the x value tells you how far left and right to go. So negative 2 means go to the left 2. The y value, or the f of x value, 3, tells you go up 3. So on the graph, and I want you all to do this now, start at the origin, go left 2, and up 3, and plot a point. I'm going to do two more points, and then I'm going to ask you all to do the rest yourselves. And I'm doing two more for a very important reason. These next two points are ones that people get messed up all the time on. The next point is negative 1, 0. Remember again, the negative 1 tells you go left 1. The 0 is saying don't go up and down at all. So the point negative 1, 0, okay, let me write that down, negative 1, 0, what that's saying is go to the left 1, don't go up or down at all. So plot a point right here, folks. That is the point negative 1, 0. But you'll notice the very next point is those exact same numbers, but they've been flipped. And this is why I said a lot of people mess up these points. Hopefully this is something that, you know, is jogging a memory from Algebra 1 or Geometry. Okay? The point 0, negative 1, same numbers, but completely different directions. Because now the 0 is saying, don't go left and right at all. And the negative 1 is saying, go down 1. So that point would be right here. Don't go left and right at all, but go down 1. That is the point 0, negative 1. 
Okay. All right, now I want to give you all one minute. See if you can graph the other three points yourselves. I've done the first four. Do the next three yourselves. All right, so I gave you all a minute to get ahead of me. I'm going to graph the next three points. Those points are 1, 0, 2, 3, and 3, 8. Those are the three points I'm going to add to the graph now. 1, 0, 2, 3. 3,8. This, by the way, is exactly what your quiz this Friday is going to look like. Okay, It's going to be a couple problems like this where we give you a function, such as x squared minus 1, and we ask you to fill in a table and create a sketch of a graph. Okay, and that's what we're going to practice again in a moment. Questions? All right, we're going to jump to page 3 here. question at the top says, how can you make a graphical representation of a function? So we're just going to continue to practice this. Now notice, for number two, it says, use the function f of x equals 3x minus 1 to complete the table below. Be sure to show your work. Then sketch a graph of the function by first plotting all points from the table. Now once again, when you're filling in the table, I'm going to show you two different ways. One is by hand. I'm not going to do that for the whole table, though, this time. Okay? One is... I'll do it for x equals 4. I'll do it for the point down at the bottom. All this function says is take the x value, multiply it by 3, and subtract 1. So take the x value, which is 4, multiply it by 3, and subtract 1. 3 times 4 is 12, minus 1 is 11. Okay, so that's one way you could fill in this chart. You could do that for every single one of these. Okay, You could do the work by hand. It's faster, in my opinion, to use the graphing calculator. Now, let me be clear before I actually do it. Let me remind you of the parent function, because right now we've got a 3 and a minus 1. Let me, let me show you the visual of what's going on here. x is the parent function. If you take away the 3, you take away the negative 1, and you just graph x, that's the parent function, y equals x. If you include the 3, then it makes it grow faster. So notice now it's going up faster, it's going down faster. So it kind of tilted the line. That's what the 3 does. So it transformed it. Blue is the parent function. Red is 3x. It's transformed. And if we do 3x minus 1, well, now not only is it tilted, but it's moved down 1. So now it's hitting the y-axis down here at negative 1 instead of going through the middle. So that red line is what we're actually interested in. Let me go ahead and put that in y1. So 3x minus 1. This is the graph we want to create. So if when we're done, if we do this correctly, we should see a line that looks like that. Now, I'm going to use the calculator to fill in this table. So I go to my calculator, and I hit second graph, and that jumps me to the table. And I want the values when x is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, we already know at negative 2, they gave us negative 7. So I could check that. At negative 2? Negative 7. Perfect. That was given. That's already in the packet. But for the next couple values, negative 1, 0, 1, we've got negative 4, negative 1, and 2. So let's write those numbers down. Negative 4, negative 1, and 2. Negative 4, negative 1, 2. And I'm going to keep going. We also need the values at 2 and 3. And we could check the value at 4 to make sure we did that correctly. Okay, so we go to our calculator, and we want to look for the values at 2, 3, and 4. And the f of x values are 5, 8, and we did it correctly when we got 11. So 5, 8, and we've confirmed 11. 5, 8, and 11. Okay, we have now completed the table. We're done with that. Okay. It says, then sketch a graph of the function by first plotting all the points. So we need to plot the points so that we can sketch the graph. In other words, we're going to put points so that we can sketch a line. Okay. Now remember once again what I said a moment ago. Your x value tells you how much you go left and right. Your f of x value tells you how much you go up and down. So if I want to plot the point negative 2, negative 7, 
what that's saying is start in the middle, go left two, and go down seven and put a point right there. Okay, that's where negative two, negative seven is. Negative two, negative seven. I'm going to do two more points, and I'm going to give you a minute to do the rest yourselves. The next point is at negative one, negative four. So that means go over one to the left and go down four. And the next point, because I said I'd do two more, is at zero, negative one. That's kind of a weird one because zero means don't go left and right at all. And negative one means go down one. So that would be right here. Okay? So take a minute, see if you can plot the other four points yourselves. Then I'll plot them and take questions. And again, call one of us over if you need help. Go. All right, before I graph the rest of these points, I want to stress something. When I went to my calculator and I typed in 3x minus 1, I can hit graph and see what I'm supposed to get. So you can literally watch and see what your picture should look like when you're done. Okay? Now, if you graph these points, the next point is at 1, 2, then 2, 5, then 3, 8. And here's where I'm going to switch to green. Remember, green, you don't have to copy. The very last point, 4, 11, it went off the grid. It's like right here. If that happens on a quiz or test, I am not going to require you to graph it. Okay, so that's optional. You could just leave that alone. If it goes off the grid, I'm not looking to torture you. Okay, but you should be able to draw this line. That is sketching the graph. So make sure you draw the line. All right, and I said a moment ago that our timing is pretty perfect because this is as far as I wanted to get today. We're going to finish day one tomorrow, okay? Now, remember with your binders, you have the option. You can leave your binders here on that bottom shelf since you're period six, okay? Or you can take them with you. That's up to you, okay? But if you're going to leave them here, what I would say is put both packets in the binder, okay? And then put it on the shelf, all right? But we're done for today. Thank you for your attention. We'll pick up right here where we left off tomorrow. That's the bottom of page three. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.